welcome back. I'm going to do a little vlog for you today. Well, I'm going to vlog the whole weekend, I hope. I'm going to go to the farm this weekend, but today I've got a day off with Inez and we're going to go swimming. And yeah, we're just going to spend the day together. Usually go for a little baby chino after swimming. So I'm going to try and take you along with me today. <laughs> it's usually a little difficult. I'm going to give it a go, but I'm in a bit of a rush. we got to get going. So that was a massive fail. <laughs> so I forgot my swimming costume. Didn't take it to swimming. So I only discovered this. Sorry if you can hear the Peppa Pig phone, by the way. I only discovered this when I was in the changing room. So kind of embarrassing. You know, you have to leave once you're in there. Everybody sees you. And I have never done this in the whole two years that I've been taking her weekly to swimming. It's just classic that I did it today. So I packed the bags last night, but I didn't check them this morning because I popped them in the car. Um, and I just, I sort of knew last night I was forgetting something, but I obviously thought I would check in the morning, but because I usually go through a big checklist because I forgot other things before, which have been annoying, like a hairband for my hair. That was a kind of annoying one. Okay, if I forget even her costume because I can buy a new one there or I can borrow one. I can borrow nappies. Just the only thing I just basically can't obtain when I'm there. I can, I can buy a towel. The only thing I can't obtain when I'm there is a swimming costume for an adult. So that was really frustrating. I had a little cry. <laughs> um, and then we got over it. In actuality, she's gonna swim this weekend, probably more than she does any other week. Um, Cause we're going to the farm, I'm gonna, the pool has been spruced up. So um, the plan is to go and spend a lot of time in the pool. I really want some like one-on-one -on -one time, like away, like not in a class setting with her in the pool. That's basically the whole point why we're going to the farm this weekend so she's going to spend loads of time in the pool the only thing that's annoying obviously is is losing the money of the lesson because they ain't cheap and she's not going to be able to go next week either because we've got plans so deep breath it happens to us all these mum moments when you just do something you forget something and you just feel like the worst mum in the world we're going to go to the shops anyway because as i say we're going to go in the pool this weekend yeah, as I say, we're going to be in the pool a lot this weekend and I want to get her a couple of things just for the pool, like a board to hold on to and stuff we use in swimming class, basically. We're going to go to the shops and do that now. Not as wholesome as I wanted, but we did go for our baby Chino, didn't we, Bean? Mm. All right, guys, I'll see you in a sec. Hi my loves, so we're back at home as you can see. We're not having the most successful day. Um, didn't manage to find everything that I wanted to find in the shops. Um, Inez was enjoying the shopping. She was picking up stuff left, right and centre. And then she didn't sleep on the car, in the car on the way back. I really, really thought she would because she seems quite tired and she loves a car nap. But alas, no luck. So we're gonna eat first. Maybe she's just a bit hungry. So we're gonna eat some pasta with cheese because that's literally all we have in the house today. We didn't do a proper shop this week for various different reasons. So we've kind of been living off whatever's in the house. And so it's a plain pasta with cheese kind of day. After this, I'm gonna take her upstairs to have a little nap, I think. Hi my loves, welcome back. We had our pasta, we came for a nap. We woke up from a nap. <laughs> Um, the good thing at least about the fact that she didn't nap in the car is that I got a nap today. It's just such a good nap. Do you know what I mean? You are just in the deepest possible sleep. I mean, when you wake up, you don't feel good, but it is enjoyable. Zach is back now. He's been at the house today. He's been doing a lot around the house recently. And we're gonna pack for the farm, but I did get a package today. The lovely Hannah from Books on the Bedside. She's one half of Books on the Bedside and she's part of the Patreon community and she may have notified us. I'll leave her links all down below. She may have notified us that there was a Virago half price sale on. It's really worth, if you're just like a book buyer, book lover, book collector, following all the publishers on Instagram. Are you gonna love every single one of their posts? I don't know. But you're gonna know when there's sales on because when publishers have sales, they're usually quite significant. Um, and it's worth trawling through the websites. So I placed an order. Okay, I wasn't going to, and then I was like, but it's such a good deal. So let me open this and show you some books. Um, but the reason I wanted to show you the box was 
books handle with care. Do not use a knife to open this package. So they're serious about their books. Now, sadly, I don't think this sale is still ongoing. So I got all of these half price. First up, this one, which seems to be their kind of book of the month. I can't remember what it said on the website. Um, but it's a new release. It's been getting really, really good reviews. I think it might have been shortlisted for the Orwell Prize this year, something like that. It's called The Story of the Forest. It's by Linda Grant. This cover is great. I don't usually like a hardback, but you know what? It's a pretty good cover. It's 1913 and a young, carefree and recklessly innocent girl, Mina, goes out into the forest on the edge of the Baltic Sea and meets a gang of rowdy young men with revolution on their minds. It sounds like a fairy tale, but it's life. The adventure leads to flight emigration and a new land, a new language and the pursuit of idealism or happiness in Liverpool. But what of the stories from the old country? How do they shape and form the next generations? who have heard the well-worn tales from the flour mills of Latvia to Liverpool suburbia to post-war Soho. The story of the forest is about myths and memory and about how families adapt in order to survive. Well, I haven't read anything by Linda Grant before. Um, but yeah, I've heard that it kind of starts in a kind of slightly mythical tone and then ends in a more realistic tone. So as you move through the story, the like style of it changes. And I'm quite surprised at how short it is considering it's build as this sort of generational family drama. So I'll let you know how I got on with that whenever I get around to reading it. I got this one, so I was going through their website and just looking, picking out titles that looked interesting to me. Um, and this one looked really interesting to me. So it's called South Riding. It's by Winifred Holtby. It's got a quote on the front from Sarah Waters, who we'll get to in a minute, who says, I can't say enough good things about this book. I think it was published I want to say in the 50s or something. First published in 1936. But apparently it's just a really beautiful rural story. Um, and I read a lot of glowing reviews for it when I went and kind of Googled it. When Sarah Burton returns to her, her hometown as headmistress, she is full of ambition, determined to create a successful school and to inspire her girls to take all they can from life. But in the aftermath of the First World War, the country is in depression and ideals are hard won. Lydia Holly, the scholarship girl from the shacks, is the most brilliant student Sarah has ever taught. But when her mother's health fails, her education must be sacrificed. Robert Kahn of Maythorpe Pool stands for everything Sarah despises. His family has farmed the South Riding for generations, its position uncontested. Yet Sarah cannot help being drawn to this proud, haunted and almost ruined man. So we'll see how we get on with that one. Um, but it could be really interesting. This one I had put on my TBR like a couple of weeks ago and then saw it on the website and I was like, I must get it. I haven't read any Shirley Hazard before, um, but this one is a transit of Venus. There was obviously a few to pick from. Caro, Gal Gallant and Adventurous, is one of two Australian sisters who have come to post-war England to seek their fortunes. Courted long and hopeless hopelessly by young scientist Ted Tice, she is to find that love brings passion, sorrow, betrayal, and finally hope. The milder grace seeks fulfillment in an apparently happy marriage. But as the decades pass and the characters weave in and out of each other's lives, love, death, and two slow burning secrets wait in ambush for them. I've seen so much, so much good stuff about this one. So yeah, we're getting into the backlist here, which is another thing that I like about these publisher sales, is that because they have a very specific selection of backlist titles. Okay, so we've got um, the Vet's Daughter by Barbara Commons. And this one is billed as a gothic masterpiece. Um, and I think it has kind of like weird vibes as well. For whatever reason, I can't find a blurb for this. But Sarah Waters said of it, it is a small gothic masterpiece. I've read it many times and with every reread, I marvel again at its many qualities, its darkness, its strangeness, its humor, its sadness, its startling images and twists of phrase. Now, speaking of Sarah Waters, I have got all four of her books that I didn't already have. So upstairs, I've got Tipping the Velvet and I've read Fingers Smith. So this is The Little Stranger. In a dusty post-war summer in rural Warwickshire, a doctor is called to a patient at Lonely Hundreds Hall. Home to the heirs family for over two centuries, the Georgian house, once grand and handsome, is now in decline. Are the heirs is haunted by something more sinister than a dying way of life? We've got The Night Watch. It is an extraordinary story of four Londoners 
Kay, who wanders the streets in mannish clothes, restless and searching. Helen, who harbors a troubling secret. Viv, glamour girl, recklessly loyal to her soldier lo lover. And Duncan, an apparent innocent, struggling with demons of his own. Moving back through the 1940s through air raids, blacked out streets, illicit liaisons and sexual adventure to end with the, its beginning in 1941. This is an astonishing novel so that it moves backwards, which is quite an interesting thing to do. Then we've got Affinity. This one I've not heard much about at all. Um, from the dark heart of a Victorian prison, disgraced spiritualist Selina Dawes weaves an enigmatic spell. Is she a fraud or a prodigy? By the time it all begins to matter, you'll find yourself desperately wanting to believe in magic. And finally, The Paying Guests. It is 1922 and in a hushed South London villa, life is about to be transformed as gentle widow Mrs Ray and her discontented daughter Frances are obliged to take in lodgers. Lillian and Leonard Barber, a modern young couple of the Clark class, bring with them gramophone music, colour, fun and dangerous desires. The most ordinary of lives, it seems, can explode into passion and drama, a love story that is also a crime story. This is vintage Sarah Waters. So my loves, that is my whole book haul. Um, I'm going to pack now, Zach's probably wondering what on earth I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm going to pack now and I'll be back in a minute. We're in the car now. We are headed to the farm. I remember if I said this before, but I'm pleased she had a late nap because um, definitely going to bed a little later today. We're gonna get some food on the way, I think. So my loves, welcome back to the vlogs. Um, we were obviously at the farm, we arrived last night. Not much to report to be honest yet, we did not sleep very well. It was not super dark upstairs, especially with the windows open, which we had to have them open for <laughs> heat reasons. Um, and so I think it was just a bit of a restless night. So yes, but apart from that, all good. Zach has taken Ines to the coffee shop, just so I can, you know, hear my own thoughts <laughs> because, because yes. She's very mummy focused if I'm in the room. And obviously she had me up quite a lot in the night. So they've gone on a little coffee date for um, half an hour or so. And I'm just obviously catching up with you guys and probably just gonna sit and read peacefully or something. And yeah, it's kind of gray and cloudy at the minute actually and kind of overcast, which is a bit sad. But um, I'm waiting on a package with this stuff that I couldn't buy yesterday. Uh, which has some like swimming bits and bobs in it. In true classic 2020s fashion, I had to delete some stuff off the memory card of the camera. Went on TikTok for five seconds. I'm crying. It's not good. <laughs> Sometimes it's not good for you because the emotions. And then the next minute I'm laughing. Anyway, it's funny because when I came in yesterday, always drawn to the bookshelves in here. If you don't know, they are, it's my aunt's, library her book collection and she sadly passed away a few years ago and so we kind of brought it here together so it could stay together and you know everybody that enjoys this barn can come and peruse her collection and I'm not gonna lie I have nicked a few things it's what I would expect of my future library is for people to begin to purloin books for their own. It's funny because I came in here yesterday and I just immediately spotted on the shelves two things which I had never noticed really before, but as I expand my knowledge of authors and particularly kind of backlist titles, um, I discover more and more on the shelves every time I come, I feel. Fortunately, there's a big mirror covering like one third of them um I'm trying to convince Zach that it's a priority to move that it's supposed to be living over here but it's against the bookshelves I think because it was so heavy I'm not really sure I think it's because it was Christmas and there was going to be a Christmas tree and... anyway so the first thing I noticed was Jim Crace's Harvest um and I read his book Eden his newest release so he released it last year so I read it last year and I was intrigued by it um, it was good, but it didn't really capture me in the way that I wanted it to. But I've heard that this is really good. So I will let you pause on this if you are interested. And this, it looks like was shortlisted for the booker. 
in 2013. Also noticed um, these Elizabeth Taylor books because these were both um, on the Virago website when I went to peruse that sale and I almost bought this. Um, so I'm glad I didn't. And yeah, I think Hilary Mantel particularly liked this author or this book so that obviously drew me to it originally obviously <laughs> i mean i could have probably just nicked these ones but i don't love hardbacks um but she did have the hardback versions of the sarah waters books oh yeah um i found a lot of michelle faber so there's one there and there's one there and I think there's some down here as well. Three down here. So obviously I've got Under the Skin. I kind of plan to read it around October time this year, but I was surprised by how many um, Julie had. Uh, if I like Under the Skin, I've got other Michelle Fabers to try. I didn't realize she was such a fan of his work or that he'd written so much. It's an absolute tip down here and I'll tell you why. And it's not just because there's a toddler in the vicinity, but well, it kind of is because the bed's upstairs obviously. And so when she goes to bed, Zach and I typically get ready. So we usually leave all our clothes down here these days. So it's kind of serving the fun function of wardrobe without a wardrobe down here. Yeah, this is what I'm wearing today basically looks like pajamas <laughs> um this is actually from i think it's a pajama set but a pajama set you're supposed to wear outside um this nice little pair of shorts they're kind of like men's boxer shorts a little bit and then this old unif t you've seen it a million times so nothing exciting just a nice chill summer day chatted to you today. I filmed a couple of little clips um, but I hope you enjoyed whatever I did <laughs> film of the weekend. We just had a really nice chilled family time, a lot of time in the pool. Today I did my two meetings for Giovanni's room. Had such wonderful time at both. In my pool. She thinks it's her book because it's one of the books she likes to kind of pretend to read because it's nice and small. And yeah we're gonna head back to London now. It's been such a wonderful weekend. Um, just really wholesome vibes. Inez has really enjoyed being in the pool. But yeah, sorry I didn't do anything more involved. I'm still kind of working out um, weekend vlogging a little bit with a little person in tow. It's been a lovely time. I'm going to head back to London. I'll catch up with you properly there, maybe. Mommy, wait you. Because we are basically about to head out Mommy, the door now. You. But this is the most wonderful background for my, for my book Mommy, videos. You. Are you ready to go in the car? Yeah. You want to go home? Okay, let's go.